Abinternal canal blasty is a novel microinvasive technique for circumferentially viscodilating Schlem's canal and the distal aqueous system using the eye track catheter. Abinternal canal blasty, like other microinvasive procedures, is performed through clear corneal incisions. The primary incision is your typical triplanar temporal clear corneal wound, followed by a paracentesis 90 degrees away. In this patient, because he is phagic and undergoing a standalone procedure, myostat is infused into the anterior chamber to provide pupillary constriction in order to avoid violation of the anterior lens capsule. Viscoelastic is then infused into the anterior chamber for anterior chamber maintenance. I prefer using a viscodispersive OVD as it lends itself to better maintenance of the anterior chamber depth and pressure during intracameral manipulation. During the paracentesis, angle the paracentesis towards the nasal drain and jangle. Even if the catheter is primed preoperatively, ensure that the catheter is primed prior to insertion into the anterior chamber. Upon insertion into the anterior chamber, direct the catheter towards the nasal drainage angle. Once the catheter is in the anterior chamber, one method of securing the catheter is to loop the catheter around and secure the port to the patient's forehead using a sperry strip. In order to obtain good visualization of the nasal drainage angle, the patient's head and microscope are both tilted. The anterior chamber is then reformed again using viscoelastic, and the same viscoelastic can be used to act as a coupling agent for the gonio lens. I typically use a prevent cystotome as my device to form my otomy within the trabecular meshwork. I simply straighten up the cystotome to allow for appropriate length to traverse the entire length of the anterior chamber. Under direct visualization, identify the pigmented trabecular meshwork and make a small nick within the trabecular meshwork using the end of the cystotone. The catheter is then grasped using microforceps, and it is preferred to grasp the catheter at an oblique angle, which makes intubation of the ostea a little easier. Once in the canal, the catheter is then circumnavigated 360 degrees. Following initial intubation, some may choose to complete circumnavigation without the gonial lens by returning the patient's head to primary position as seen here. When using the gonio lens, you can see the fiber optic probe reach its final destination which is complete circumnavigation of the canal. Once circumnavigation is complete, the patient's head is returned to the primary position to allow for direct visualization of the entire corneal scleral limbus. Upon withdrawal of the catheter, viscoelastic is infused into Schlem's canal using the visco injector. Because the anterior chamber is pressurized with viscoelastic, the canal can be more aggressively viscodilated without the risk of decimates detachments. In this case, the technician is providing two clicks per clock hour. We're using a second instrument to act as a fulcrum to minimize the linearization of the otomy. As you can see, there is a level of perilimbal blanching of the episcleral vessels. Because of the minimal trauma to the trabecular meshwork, it's very important to remove the viscoelastic from the anterior chamber in order to avoid postoperative pressure spikes. As with normal cataract extraction, the patient's primary wound is hydrated with balanced salt solution in order to provide a self-sealing wound. On postoperative day one, there's minimal anterior chamber reaction and minimal heme within the anterior chamber. In this setting, the patient's heme is limited to the paracentesis site. Corneoscopically, at the one month mark, there is very little evidence of any trauma into the trabecular meshwork. The surgical video that was presented was this young man who had controlled glaucoma on three medications but was highly intolerant to his meds. He had baseline untreated IOPs of 30 OU and baseline medicated treated IOPs of 15 OU. Two months postoperatively, his IOP is 15 and medication free. His left eye is still on medications and still quite irritated. He is anxiously awaiting his procedure in the left eye.